Republicans are blasting the massive spending plan that just narrowly passed in the Senate, calling it an economic assault on the middle class and warning that Democrats will pay the price for it in the midterms. Not one GOP senator voted in favor of the nearly $740 billion spending bill. Meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris, she had to come in and break the 50-50 tie. On this vote, the yeas are 50, the nays are 50. The Senate being equally divided, the Vice President votes in the affirmative, and the bill, as amended, is passed. <laughs> And that vote came after a marathon 16-hour session over the weekend. They called it Votorama, where Republicans tried to add amendments, but Democrats swatted them down. And when it was all over, the package still contained hundreds of billions of dollars for climate change, a huge priority of the American people, deficit reduction, and tax hikes. Plus, it supersizes the IRS, adding 87,000 agents, while the Democrats were patting themselves on the back for this and getting their liberal wish list passed. Republicans warned this is turning into a war on the middle class that will backfire big time on the Dems come November. Here's Senator Ted Cruz. All the Democrats say they're worried and want to low ga lower gas prices. They all just voted to raise gas taxes and to raise your price at the pump. This bill creates 87,000 new IRS agents. It doubles the size of the IRS. The Democrats are making the IRS bigger than the Pentagon, plus the Department of State, plus the FBI, plus the Border Patrol combined. The IRS is going to be bigger. This is a massive power grab. So gone is the Inflation Reduction Act, Harris, and I say that because all of the headlines suggest that it's no longer here. And with us now is the climate bill. CBS says Senate passes Democrat sweeping climate, health and tax bill. CNN, Senate passes yeah. sweeping health care and climate bill. NBC, you can read them for yourself. The Guardian, it is now the climate bill. So that was the inherent lie in how they were going to pass this. And look, I, I call I, I just call balls and strikes the CBO. Wharton and Penn, many analysts had looked at this, Bernie Sanders, yeah, <laughs> right, and said this does nothing to lower inflation. In fact, if you look, it increases it for two years, and then it kind of goes flat till 2031. So that doesn't help us with inflation at all. Yet they called it the Inflation Reduction Act because they had to get people behind this in their own party. They had to do it. I'm curious, though, does this give Kamala Harris the kind of street cred she was so thirsty for? She finally got something done. She signed <laughs> this bill into law as the deciding vote. She could just sit there and do that. And then they all rally around and they take their victory lap. Look, how many Democrats have lined up? We just left the Faulkner focus with this very thought. So many of them are saying no to Joe Biden. You're going to have to give her street cred. Is this part of how you do it? I mean, so it was a win-win for Democrats, not for the American people. Not at all. Um, and you mentioned Senator Bernie Sanders. We have that. Let's play a moment of honesty here from Senator Sanders. I want to take a moment to say a few words about the so-called Inflation Reduction Act that we are debating uh, this evening. And I say so-called, uh, by the way, because according to the CBO, and other economic organizations who have studied this bill, it will, in fact, have a minimal impact on inflation. Not quite the DNC talking points, Jackie. Yeah, no, I mean, look, finally they're calling it what it is, Harris, to the point that you just made. Inflation Reduction Act was a total line just to get people to think it was something that it wasn't. Um, with respect to your point about Kamala Harris, that this is a win for her, it may be within the party, but the problem is what this is going to do, the cost to the American people. So if you continue spending in the current environment that we're in, you're 100% yeah. right, inflation is only going to get worse. What happens then? All the onus goes into the lap of the Fed. Jerome Powell raised rates aggressively 
quickly to try to tamp inflation down and we get stuck deeper in a recession. And the irony with respect to expanding the IRS in this way that's going to impact the low and middle classes, those are the people so that you promised you yeah. were going to help. Now you're going to come after them. They're defenseless. They don't have the kind of money that they can spend on lawyers and accountants nope. to fight back. They get scared. They get upset and they just want to settle um, at a time when they're already paying more across the board for goods and services. And essentially you're going to add more, dump more taxes, effective taxes in their laps. This is really, it's troubling for the American people. During a recession, yeah. and, and that's key here because Democrats, they do understand basic economics, so they threw it out the window here. But listen to what Democrats said prior to this moment. I don't think during a time of recession you mess with any of the taxes or increase any taxes. When the economy is in decline, you don't want to raise overall taxes. I will cut taxes, cut taxes for 95 percent of all working families. Because in an economy like this, the last thing we should do is raise taxes on the middle class. I mean, was, do they have amnesia? I don't know. <laughs> Most likely they do, right? But here's what they're doing, too. They're coming out and saying, oh, this doesn't raise taxes. You will save money. You will save money because we're going to give you rebates on solar panels, on energy efficient appliances. Because you're buying, buying solar panels tomorrow. Uh, oh, right? I am. And that EV. electric cars. Yes. I mean, see, that's the thing. It, it, they say if you buy an EV, we'll give you a rebate. Well, chances are the people buying electric vehicles are wealthier than the average people in America because these cars are expensive. whoop de doo we get a rebate on that. And, or on an energy efficient uh, refrigerator or dishwasher. That is not really helping too many people. So I like it when they try to sell something with this, it's the Inflation Reduction Act, and it's got a couple little things tucked in, but basically it's like saying, I'm wearing silver right now. Uh, I'm silver here, but I'm really wearing yellow. They're telling you one thing, but deep inside when you dig in, you find the gross stuff. And let's just see what Lisa Murkowski of Alaska said. She, she didn't vote for this, and she very often votes with Democrats, but she said even floor debate with amendment votes starting just before midnight on Saturday and continuing through Sunday afternoon was designed to avoid public awareness and scrutiny. While I don't uh. oppose everything within the bill, there's no doubt in my mind based on both substance and process that the Senate should not have passed it. Mm. Well, but to expand on your analogy, the American people know yellow is not silver, Todd. In fact, they told ABC such with nearly 7 in 10 saying the economy is going to get worse. GOP, they should look alarm bells for the midterms. GOP has plus 9 on the economy, plus 10 on inflation, plus 9 on gas prices on which party voters trust to handle the number one, two, right. three issues for the American people. Well, we've talked about ad nauseum how the left likes to relabel things, and I'm pretty sure the only reason you have me on the show is because you like my analogy. So here's another one to the parents <laughs> of daughters. When you want to give your daughter a bad medicine, you call it princess juice and say, here, here's princess <laughs> juice. Isn't this great? And then you take it, you realize it's medicine. Well, this is for a prescription that, quite frankly, the American people don't need. Before we go, we've talked about the democratic assault on the middle class, faith, family, freedom. I look at this bill and I say, they're cutting out the middleman. They're getting rid of the middle class entirely with this bill. Wow. This is part of another step toward that. Wow. Todd, That's... we have you on the show because we love you. Oh, and and the analogies. <laughs> Just to speak to what you said real quickly, though, that CBO score, that's what they didn't want people to see. They didn't want people to see that it wasn't going to have any effect on inflation. So it was a skirting of time in order for that not to be seen by a wider public. Mm -hmm. And that's the rush, the rush to do the vote this rush, weekend. Exactly. They wanted to jam it down before people really understood what was happening. Yep, and this will crush the middle class. Hello, higher taxes. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-host Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.